When using this push block, you'll almost always use it in combination with a push stick. Plus, you're gonna need a push stick to make the push block. So, I've included a template, a cutting template for the push stick. And these are in the plans and it comes in two pieces here. So what you need to do is just line up these targets here and then tape these together. I usually just hold it against a window so that I can see through it. I could use spray adhesive to attach this template to this scrap of three quarter inch plywood. And now with this board clamped to my workbench, I can cut this out using my jigsaw. Now I can just peel that template off and give this a good sanding. You can keep sanding and shaping this however you like till you get a comfortable fit in your hand. All right, now onto the push block. I'm gonna start with the handle assembly and that contains two parts, the handle itself and then the channel that it rides in. The first thing I wanna do is make that channel. So I'm gonna raise my saw blade half the thickness of a three quarter inch piece of plywood. The nice thing about plywood is you can actually count the plies to find the middle. But in this case, it doesn't have to be exact. Just get it kind of close. I'm using this oversized scrap of plywood, even though the actual base of this handle is only gonna be this wide, just because it's gonna be a lot easier for me to control this through multiple shallow cuts with this extra room over here, rather than trying to cut a very narrow strip. Plus it's a little safer this way. So I'll move my rip fence over to 3 8 of an inch from the blade. And I'll just make my first cut. Now I can just move this fence over a little bit more after each pass to make this channel. Once you feel like you're starting to get close, start checking it after every pass with another piece of plywood to get a good fit. Now I can move my fence over to its final width and raise my blade back up. When you have a narrow strip to cut out against your rip fence like this, the temptation is just to stand here and push the board through. But the problem with that is that the piece that you want, your, your work piece, is unsupported all the way through the cut. And so it just, it actually won't make it all the way through the saw blade and it could potentially bind, especially if you're pressing this way against the board. So the solution is to keep it supported. And since you don't already have a push block to help you with that, that's what the push stick is for. So it'll just grab a hold of the end of the board on that cleat and then you can support this side of the board with your left hand and then your the work piece is fully supported and can push all the way through. And I'll use my miter gauge to cut this down to its final length. This is the template for the handle. What I want to do is cut off this bottom section so that's nice and square. Now I'll be able to line that edge up with a nice square edge of the plywood so I won't be cutting that with the jigsaw.
First I'll cut out this center part. I need to start by drilling a starter hole. And that'll let me drop my jigsaw blade into it and get started. And here again, you can just keep shaping and sanding this until you get a comfortable fit. The one thing you don't want to do is sand that factory edge of the plywood that's nice and straight since that's going to fit down into that channel. And the handle just fits into that channel like that. Before I glue that in place though, I need to drill a hole over here and over here. And I just think it's gonna be easier to do that before I attach this than afterwards. That way I can get my drill in there. So what I'll do is just kind of line this up. I mean, I guess I could drill from the other side. It doesn't really matter. Anyways, I'm just gonna drill the holes now. So, so there, there's gonna be a hole like there. And then I'll put one see, right about there. Okay. Now I can just glue this into place. Probably doesn't really need it because it's a pretty tight fit, but I'm gonna clamp this together anyways. Just like that. The replaceable base is a two by four. You can cut it to any length you like. In some cases, you actually might want a longer length, but in general, I'm gonna make mine nine inches long probably most of the time. I'm gonna attach the handle just right in the middle like that. Some people suggested that the handle be tipped a little bit to the side to help provide pressure toward your rip fence. If you wanna do it that way, that's fine too. I'm gonna to attach this with one inch screws and washers. I want the cleats for the back side to be the same width as the two by four, so I'll just use this as a guide. And maybe make it a little bit smaller. I'll make these out of quarter inch plywood. I want each of these cleats to be a little bit bigger than the thickness of the two by four, so, you know, somewhere around in there. And so I'll line that up using my miter gauge. So that's the distance I want, but I don't want to use my rip fence and potentially have this piece get caught between the blade and the fence, which would cause kickback. So I'll just use a block to measure with like that, and then I can get it out of the way. I'll drill two holes in each of these. And I'll attach this with one inch screws also. I'm just leaving that little overhang there for a cleat, maybe quarter inch or so. That's something you can adjust however you want. That's all there is to making the push block. You have these extra cleats, you can just store them somewhere so you can easily replace them when this one gets all chewed up. I want you to get in the habit of always using a push block whenever you're cutting a board using your rip fence, a long cut. I think it's a safer method than trying to use two push sticks. The main reason is that this large surface helps keep the board pressed against the table. And if you're using the push block correctly, you should have three different directions of pressure. You'll be pushing down on it to keep it pressed against the table. And then you, that cleat is pushing it forward. And then what you need is some method of keeping the board pressed against your work 
against your rip fins. If it's a large board like this, you could probably just support it with your hand. But if you're getting to a narrower cut, then that's why you want to use the push stick in combination with the push block. So you push, use the push block to push it through and down, and then the push stick will press it against the fence. Ultimately, it keeps your fingers safe because there's this much material between your hand and the blade. But in addition to the safety benefits, a push block will help you get better cuts just because you're supporting your workpiece better. To set up for any cut, you wanna make sure that your blade teeth extend just a little bit higher than the board you're cutting. You don't need to raise your blade way up high. Right here is just fine. All right, so let's say that I wanna cut this board, you know, about that wide. So what I'll do is I'll just lock in my rip fence and then this cleat of the push block will rest against the back of the board and the push block should be all the way up against your fence. There's plenty of room on the cutoff side of this board that I can just use my hand to support it. Now let's say I need to cut a narrow strip, say a board that wide. So I'll use the push block the exact same way, but this time what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna cut into the sacrificial two by four and it'll cut into the cleat, which is exactly what it's designed to do. In this case, the board is so, the cutoff side is so close to the blade that I don't wanna keep my fingers there. So I will use the push stick. And here you can see the aftermath of that cut, just a very thin groove cut into that. And then of course the cleat has a cut through it. And eventually the cleat may just get chipped away to where there's not much there, in which case you just want to flip it around and use the other side or use one of your spare cleats. I want to point out that you can make this as complicated and fancy as you want. I was intentionally trying to keep this as simple as possible so that more people could make it and just start using it. When I was showing you my prototype version in my hashtag shorts video a while back, a lot of you had some suggestions on how you might improve this, and I wanted to go over a few of those right now. By far, the most common concern were these screws, well, really probably these screws too, and would they get hit by the saw blade? And that's a valid concern if you are regularly raising your blade up really, really high. You would have to have it quite a bit higher than the surface of the board to possibly nick those, and then of course they would have to be in line to hit those. To me, that's not a concern because I just don't raise is it that high that it's nowhere close to those. But if that's something that worries you, you don't want to dull your saw blade by hitting those screws, there's a couple of options that people suggested. The first one was you can use nylon, they're plastic screws. You can get those at a hardware store and just put those in there. I'm not really sure how strong those are, but I think they would work because this doesn't really need a lot of strength. Oh, and another suggestion would be to use brass screws. Brass is a real soft metal that you can cut with a table saw blade and it won't damage it. Another option some of you suggested was to just glue the cleat to the two by four, either with wood glue or even hot glue. And then when you've used it up, you can just saw it off. I guess the only problem there would be to, this wouldn't ride flat on your table saw when you wanted to cut it. So you'd have to, I guess, cut off that cleat part first, something like that. And then of course there were people who got all kinds of like more complicated suggestions, like making a sliding dovetail piece that would slide in there and little compartments that you would drop these in. All of these are you know, great suggestions. If you wanna do that, do that. But again, I just wanted to keep this as simple as possible and I think it works well. Another suggestion a lot of you had was to make it grippier by gluing some sandpaper to the bottom of this, like a coarse grit sandpaper. Again, it seems to hold the board in place just fine with just the cleat alone and then the downward pressure of the two by four. And I'm not sure if I want sandpaper always cutting against against the blade of my saw. Or some of you suggested gluing on some of that grippy stuff like they use in drawers in your cabinets or whatever, and that's another solution. But I think that would just get kind of wound up and kind of make a mess in your table saw blade. Again, I'm a real fan of keeping things simple. However you decide to make your push block, the main thing is just to have one and make sure that you use it. By the way, if you're just starting out in woodworking and need a little help setting up your first shop, or if you have a shop and you just need
need to kind of get it under control a little bit better, I have a course designed just for you. It's called the Weekend Workshop, and I'll take you step by step through the entire process of setting up a shop, including building all of the fixtures that you see in my shop. Head over to theweekendworkshop.com and check it out. Thanks for watching, everybody.